Here he is, a philosopher, a writer, a comedian, a man who introduces himself, the host of Vague But True, Tim Bedour. Well, thank you very much. As a life coach and spiritual guru, my help is most needed during this, the Christmas holiday season. Why? If you're like me, a man, you really don't like shopping and stink on ice at gift giving. But gift giving, the purchasing of Christmas presents, must be done if you want to be a good American and stay married. More on that later. The Christmas shopping season accounts for over 30% of yearly retail sales in America, and for that, the American business community says, Praise Jesus! Praise that sweet baby Jesus! Too little is said about Jesus and his impact on the business world, but when Jesus turned a few fishes and loaves into enough to feed the masses, he wasn't just performing a miracle. He was showing retailers how keeping your overhead low drives up profits. Business is the business of America, and every holiday season, I want to do my part for the American economy. But Christmas gift-giving has always been a nightmare for me. I'm very good at gift-getting, but at gift-giving... I stink. Anyway, according to those who I give gifts, well, my wife thinks I stink at gift giving. One Christmas before Karen and I were married, I gave her an urn. Some of you may be asking, why did I give a woman I was hoping to marry an urn? Well, I was in a funky shop and saw this funky thing, didn't know what it was, but it was cool and unique looking. So Karen got and opened in front of her whole family on Christmas Eve what turned out to be an urn, which the store didn't have the decency to label as an urn, just three letters, U-R-N, not much effort, help me out a little bit here, or put a warning sticker on it. Don't buy this urn unless you know someone who is recently deceased or on the way. After decades of gift-giving failure, we just gave up. Karen now buys herself something and then I wrap it up. It's just the safest way to go because I never want to see that look on her face again, that I just got an urn look. Apparently, I never got the memo or lessons on gift giving. One year early in our relationship, I gave Karen a cappuccino maker, and she told me, never give a woman an appliance on Christmas. You give the woman in your life something associated with emotion. I said, Karen, you love coffee. That's an emotion. I guess I've always been pathetic. In my 20s, I gave my then-girlfriend, Mary, a sewing machine for Christmas. She had mentioned when she was younger, she loved to sew. So for Christmas, I got her a sewing machine. And when she opened it, she said, never give a woman an appliance on Christmas. You give the woman in your life something associated with emotion. I said, you told me you love to sew. She said, but I'm not 12 anymore. And I said, when I was 12, I loved to play baseball. And if I open your present to me and it's a baseball glove and bat, I'm very happy. Happy. That's an emotion. Truth be told, I got the memo on gift giving years ago, but must keep forgetting what it said. It's not just gift giving. Christmas itself makes me anxious. When I was four years old, my brother Tom convinced me to go explore the attic. I didn't want to explore the attic. Evil things live up in the attic. But even at age four, boys are so aware of the whole macho male thing. So I said, nothing scares pre-kindergarten man. Let's go to the attic. We opened the door to the attic and a dead bat fell right at our feet. And it had that horrible frozen dead bat look in its face. And when you're four years old, you're only three feet tall and your face is very close to the floor where... The dead bat face is. It's, it's facial proximity to evil that is most frightening. The closer your face is to evil, the more scary it is. Anyway, Tom takes a piece of Christmas wrapping paper that was there on the attic steps because my mom never wanted to go up there because of all the evil things living up there. So she just put stuff on the steps. Tom takes some Christmas wrapping paper and scoops up the dead bat and we go outside to bury it. But first... Tom starts chasing me around the yard with the dead bat. He's knocking it up against my heels. I'm screaming, and you can't really run at that age. Your bones aren't even hard yet. You're just a little flesh bag rolling around in a panic, screaming. I'm trying to run away and looking back, and all I can see is that dead bat face next to a happy Santa Claus face on the Christmas wrapping paper. So every Christmas, when you see Santa and are filled with joy and togetherness and warmth, I'm seeing the wings of death. Thanks, Tom. Plus, when I was little, my mom used to bake a birthday cake for the baby Jesus, and we would not only present the cake to our nativity scene, but then we'd actually sing happy birthday to the baby Jesus 
figurine in the nativity scene. I can distinctly remember thinking, if this ceramic baby Jesus doesn't come to life, crawl out of the manger, walk across the straw and cotton balls my mom put in the nativity scene to represent snow that fell in the Judean desert. We lived in Wisconsin, so there's always snow at Christmas. And I guess that's why my mom cotton balls snowbanks into the nativity scene at Christmas in the Middle East. Anyway, if Jesus doesn't animate and blow out the candle on this cake, if that doesn't happen, I'm growing up in a family of druids. We're singing happy birthday to a ceramic figurine with a chip in its foot. Baby Jesus was missing a few toes. It was all very disconcerting for me. Things got a little better when our daughter was born because then Christmas becomes all about your kids and my daughter is just, to this day, so easy to shop for because she wants everything. She always has. Here is a recording of my daughter at the age of four or five looking through a Christmas catalog and picking out what she might want from Santa. Here is what she said. I want this. And it just kept going on. Every single thing in the catalog. 150 different items. She wanted every one of them. I mean, she just didn't stop. So I can't go wrong with her. All these years later, she still likes whatever I get her because she still pretty much wants. But enough about me. For you young guys out there, here's a little bit of life coach advice. Don't get your girlfriend, fiance, wife, an appliance for Christmas. That's for starters. And while you may want to go unique and take a chance on getting her an outside-the-box gift, I caution against it, especially if she's going to be opening it in front of her family. If you do screw up every year afterwards on Christmas Eve, you are on the risk of getting what I get every year from Karen's family as they wonder aloud what gift-giving mistake I've made this year after the traditional retelling of the story of the urn. Oh, much laughter at my expense. Be safe, get her a scarf or jewelry. From Minneapolis, Minnesota, where the introverts stare at their shoes and the extroverts stare at your shoes, I'm Tim Bedore on Scott Edwards, your host and MC podcast.